Welcome. This is Professor Laird. This is the introduction video to the American government class for the spring 2022 semester online course. I would obviously much rather be teaching in person in the classroom, even though this is probably what I would look like if I was teaching in the classroom. So nevertheless, we are dealing with more online courses. And uh, unfortunately, the online courses put a little bit more burden on you to keep up, to read carefully, to participate in the class. And that's one of the most important things that I want to get across in today's introduction video is that uh, I'm gonna treat this class as much as I possibly can, like a classroom class on campus to where it's gonna be as interactive on a daily basis as I can possibly make it. So what that means, as, I, as I've said in the uh, announcement that I've already sent to you, that uh, lectures, the video lectures will be posted each Monday and Wednesday morning, and you'll have a 12 hour window on Mondays and Wednesdays in which to watch that video lecture in addition in that 12 hour window You'll have, well, I'll post the discussion forums around noon or so, but you'll have also be, between uh, noon and 7 p.m., you'll have to respond to a discussion form that should just take you just a few minutes to do that. So what will happen here is that you'll have from 7 a.m. to around 7 p.m. each Monday and Wednesday, to watch the video lecture and respond to a short discussion forum. Now, if, if you're not able to do that within a 12 hour window, then that suggests that the, the class is not much of a priority to you and I would recommend that you not take the class. So uh, one of the things that I would highly stress in this first uh, video lecture, this first video presentation here is that you have to give this class a priority. This is, this is college. You wanna take it to the next level and you want to be proactive. You want to stay engaged in the course on a daily basis. So that's what I want to do today is go through the syllabus in detail so that we're all clear on what is required to um, complete this course. So what I'm gonna do first is go into the Moodle page. Now, assuming you're watching this video lecture, you're more than likely already into Moodle. This is the introduction page where I posted the basic uh, intro right there. Also, this is where the announcements are. I've stressed that you want to check your school email on a daily basis because whenever I post an announcement, it's going to go directly to your school email, so you want to check that each day as well as check what's happening on Moodle here each day. For example, in the announcements, I go in there and here's the, uh, the first announcement that I sent out. And you want to read these very carefully. This is why I stress this so much that these online courses, one of the reasons why they're a little bit lacking as far as what I see on my end as well as being a little bit more demanding on your end is that you have to read everything that I send you very carefully so that you understand what's required. For example, right here in my first announcement, I said that I need you to respond to me via email that you've got this announcement. And as of this moment here, just a, a day or so before class starts, I've, I've only received one response at this point. So you're going to want to stay fully engaged in the class on a daily basis. Here is the syllabus posted on the introductory page. Then going to the next, this is the week that we're in uh, for the first class. This is where this video lecture will be posted by the time you're watching it, as well as the discussion forum that will be posted later on in the day. So let's look at the syllabus, I would recommend that you print out a hard copy and have one with you. 
at all times so that you can refer to it. As I said, the video lectures will be assigned each Monday and Wednesday. I'll get into the participation in a little bit more detail here in a second. Here is my email address. This is the best way to contact me. Rather than posting something in Moodle, can't always guarantee that that's going to go to my email. So what I want you to do if you have to contact me is send it to my email, rlaird at bergen.edu. I do have an office space on campus that I will be there typically on Tuesday mornings. Primarily, our best method of meeting one-on-one, -on -one, I'll get to that here in a minute as well, is a video conference through WebEx. Now, as far as the course goes, we are looking at the United States federal government, the basics of that. We're going to be looking at the roots and evolution of our democratic system of government in the United States. We're going to look quite a bit at the Constitution on how it was created and what's in it. Other decision-making institutions such as Congress, courts, looking at public opinion, political parties, interest groups, also economic policy and foreign policy. Here at the end of this video today, we'll go through the schedule briefly so you'll have a good idea as to what the course will be covering and what days it will, that will be covered on. Students will also be introduced to the use of objective critical analysis. This is uh, not only to help you learn things better, understand things better, but will also help you in writing your paper. We'll get to the paper assignment here in a little bit. The required textbook for the class is American Government, Brief Introduction, 16th edition is the latest edition. Almost all of my lectures are based on that textbook. I do have some supplemental information here and there where I cover some things that the book may not necessarily go into as much and there's some things in the book that I might not necessarily cover but this is what uh, my lectures are based on. The lecture notes, the videos, tests, we'll get into all that a little bit here or later, supplemental articles, reading assignments, Everything will be posted on Moodle, so you're going to want to check Moodle every day as well as your school email every day. In addition, you're going to want to keep up with current events on politics and governments through credible news sources. There's lots of credible news sources out there. We can discuss a few throughout the class that will also help you in deciding on a paper topic, which we'll get into here in a minute. Students will also learn the importance of peer-reviewed academic journals. This is where the scientific studies, whether it's political science or biological science, there's just all kinds of fields out there, where the peer-review process enables the uh, researchers to publish their material that has been uh, kind of gone through the scientific method, gone through the process to ensure its consistency and credibility. I will be uh, stressing those quite heavily as far as their importance is also how to access them through the library databases because these will be the most important aspect of your class paper. Alright now as far as your online course participation this is extremely important 15 percent of your grade is based on participation this is not going to be a self-paced course. If you're expecting that, I would suggest that you not take the course. You're going to want to be proactive, engaged on a daily basis, keeping up with the material. There's deadlines on every single thing that I assign you will have a deadline on it on that day. So if you don't engage in the course and do the assignments that are required for that day, you'll miss that assignment and you'll be counted absent. For that day. So that's why it's extremely important that you give this course a priority. The same priority, if perhaps not a bigger priority, than you would if it was in the classroom. Because despite the convenience of you not having to drive to the uh, campus, this is going to put more burden on you to stay engaged because we're seeing 
some deficiencies in the online courses because students are not giving it a priority and not keeping up, not being proactive, not staying engaged in the class. So I will probably say that a few more times during this uh, introduction video here as to the importance of that for this course. So the video lectures will be posted each Monday and Wednesday morning according to the schedule that we'll be seeing here in a minute but you'll know ahead right now it's Monday and Wednesdays are our class days. It'll be post, the video lectures will be posted around 7 o'clock in the morning and the deadline to respond to the discussion forum which I'll post typically around noon or 1 p.m. will be 7 p.m. that evening so once again you'll have a 12-hour window to watch the video uh, an additional seven-hour window to respond to a discussion forum that might take you just a few minutes at the most if you're unable to do that again you're not giving this class the priority that it deserves and I would recommend that you not take it so uh, you're gonna want to give this class the utmost priority because this is a college credit the credits that you get for this course will be the same as if you're taking it at Harvard or at Berkeley you're gonna get the exact same value from this class so I would definitely give it the priority that it needs students will be uh, requested during this course to schedule a short one-on-one -on -one video conference with me during the first few weeks of the class will be fairly flexible on that I'll set up a schedule on Moodle a discussion forum where people can uh, insert what time they want to do it might take us a few weeks to do this but I want to meet with each one of you individually I want to be able to have visual contact with you during this meeting if you're unable to do this then we could set up a conference on campus in my office you can do that but it's very important that I meet with each person individually within the first few weeks of this class so that uh, you know I can address any uh, issues that you may have as well as to meet you individually uh, that will get the course off on a, uh, a better footing I think so the attendance for the course will be taken through the responses to discussion forums like I said I'm gonna treat this just like a classroom if you don't respond to the discussion forum you're absent and we move on that's it failure to respond by the 7 p.m. deadline will be absent for that day and just as I would in a classroom class being absent results in a five points deduction from your attendance grade your attendance grade of course being 15 percent of your total grade we'll look at the grade breakdown here in a minute now you could have some points deducted from your discussion forum response if you do not follow instructions or if you repeat what somebody else has already said depending on of course what the forum is asking Nevertheless, you're going to want to read the previous posts before you respond to the discussion to avoid repetition. Or if you fail to watch the video lecture before responding, this is very important. Students are required to watch the entire video lecture. To watch the video lecture in its entirety before entering into the discussion forum. If you do not watch the video lecture, you'll be counted absent and this is important because if you do not watch the video lecture and then you go into the discussion forum in order to try to uh, get attendance well that is a form of cheating that would be similar to you having somebody in the classroom if when I'm if I'm in a classroom class and I'm passing around a sign-up sheet and you say oh would you sign in for me and assuming the professor is too dense to even know that you're there or what that would be cheating because you're not there but yet you're getting somebody to uh, count you attendant so it's kind of the same concept here if you don't watch the video lecture you're not there and you have to do it that day because that's when the discussion forum is posted for you to uh, respond to to get attendance now this may sound a little bit harsh but I've got to have a structured program like this to get the most out of it again everything 
that uh, I do has got a reason behind it, so you're just going to have to trust me on that. But even more importantly, that if you do not watch the video lectures, you will not do well on the test. Just like if you do not show up in the classroom, yeah, you might be able to get notes from somebody in the class, but if you don't show up and you don't listen to the professor explaining the important concepts that, that the professor really wants you to uh, take with you, if you're not there getting that, you're not going to do well on the test. So it has multiple uh, purposes for going to class, watching the video lecture, both the same thing. Very important. As I said, attendance, this participation, is going to be 15% of the total course grade. It is your responsibility to keep up with the lectures and the discussion forums. The forum will be closed at the 7 p.m. deadline. So this is uh, very important because I don't want students to get their feelings hurt here. But if you send me a email later that evening saying, oh, uh, I forgot or you know was called up at whatever, and I didn't respond, could you open it back up? I won't be responding to those. It's going to be just like a classroom. If you don't show up, if you don't, respond by the 7 p.m. deadline, we just move on. And in, in missing one forum, just like you miss one class in the classroom, is not going to kill your grade. What, what this participation grade does for me is enables me to gauge which students are really giving this class a priority and which students overall in general are not because they're missing several forums. So it's just a, another method for me to uh, gauge your uh, participation in your in the class as well as provide the uh, background and the basics for that 15% of your attendance grade. The discussion forum could be a group exercise that would require some communication or interaction within the class, so you would do that through your postings. The forum could also be in a quiz format to where the students would not be able to see what the other students have posted. Now let's talk about the tests. There'll be three tests during the course, as you'll see here in the schedule. I'll be breaking the course down into three sections with a test at the end of each of those. The tests will be online tests on Moodle. They'll be posted on Moodle. You'll enter in the test and it'll be fairly self-instructive there as to what to do for the test. We'll, we'll get into that more later if, if we need to. But each test will cover about four to five chapters, as you'll see on the schedule. Each test will account for 20% of your grade, so the three tests will be accounting for 60% of your total grade. Now, even though the tests will be open book and open notes, I would not rely on that singly. You will, you will want to be prepared for these tests because they are timed, typically about 35 minutes. You'll have 35 minutes to complete the test in one sitting. So therefore, I cannot recommend this strongly enough. You'll need to be prepared for the test before you start it, as you will not have time to look up the answers to the questions during the test. So what I would highly recommend is that you would treat this online test the exact same as if you treat it if it was a closed book test in the classroom. The difference, of course, is that you would have your, your notes available to you if you needed them, but I would be just as prepared, memorize as much as you possibly can. I'll be posting a study guide that will help you zone in on the most important topics that the test is going to cover. But I would treat it the same, be very prepared, the test will be posted around noon on that day of the test, as shown on the schedule. Deadline to complete the test will also be 7 p.m., so you'll have a seven-hour window in which to go in and take that 35-minute test in one sitting. And if you miss that deadline, you've missed the test. That's extremely important. I'll discuss that again here in a couple of minutes. The test could include multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank, true, false, short answer, Short essay, I like to, to uh, provide a variety of questions on the test because that helps me gauge which students have prepared more, have studied more, 
and have retained more for the test. The short essay question would require a student to demonstrate a fundamental understanding of what is, of what is being asked. So keep in mind, if you just regurgitate a list of bullet points that are shown in the lecture si slides, that's not going to be adequate. You don't want to just copy and paste stuff and throw it there on the test. You're going to want to demonstrate some understanding of that question because if you just list verbatim what's on the lecture and just plop it onto the test, does not demonstrate that you understand what you're copying. So you want to avoid that at all costs. Taking notes during the video lectures will certainly increase your ability to do well on the test, just as in a classroom. The answers to the test questions come from the lectures that I'm giving you, which come from the textbooks, not from Google. I've been really surprised over the past couple of years on how many students that I've talked with, and I we're talking about the test, we're going over the test, and I'm just curious as to where these answers came from because they were nowhere near what I talked about during the lecture and lo and behold more and more often oh well I, I googled that and I go well that's not where you get the answers you don't google it you you watch the video lectures and you take notes that's where the answers come from now this is extremely important because this could be a semester killer if you miss a test without any prior communications, you're going to get a zero. Uh, I, I can't stress this more emphatically because this demonstrates a student not being engaged in the class if they don't even know what day the test is on. And that day goes, comes and goes and passes and they go a couple of days later, oh, Mr. Professor, uh, I guess I need to take the test. Well, no, it doesn't work that way because that's not fair to the other students particularly after I have graded it and posted it back on Moodle, there's just certainly not fair for someone to be able to take a test after everybody else is prepared, kept up, and taken the test on the day that it was scheduled. So it is your responsibility to communicate on that day of the test if there is an emergency. And that way we can make arrangements accordingly. But if you just don't show up for the test, don't provide any information or communication whatsoever. That is unacceptable, and you will get a zero on the test. You cannot take the test after it has been graded and posted on Moodle. A student can't pass the course if they don't take test number three. As you'll see here in a minute, for each test, there's no makeups, there's no extra credit, and there's no extensions on the test. So you have to be prepared, you have to keep up, you have to stay engaged. It is your responsibility to do that, to know the schedule, to meet the requirements of the course. Very important here, if you intend on having any accommodations, read this. It's extremely important. I need to know that as soon as possible. Now, as far as the paper for the class, I'm going to talk about this in more detail as we go. But be sure to read this more than once. For now, the most important thing is that your paper topic will be on some current issue, current problem that is relevant to United States federal government or politics. So there's a lot of issues, a lot of topics out there because there's very little in the United States, particularly if we're looking at big picture type topics, that the government is not eventually going to have to get involved in or that it's going to affect government, influence government, or in fact the government may be uh, kind of spearheading this issue in the first place. So there's lots of things to look at out there. The most important thing that you want to be thinking about now is what topic you'd like to write about. That topic will not be due until Wednesday, February 28th. So you've got some time to be thinking, maybe looking ahead in the textbook, obviously reading the news, watching the news, credible news reports to see what's going on out there in the uh, country today. And then on Wednesday, February 28th, I'll need a one-half page summary of that topic in a Word file 
format will be double spaced, 12 point font, Times New Roman, one inch margins. That will be the format for all of the writing assignments. So the th main thing to do right now is to be thinking about a topic. This summary that you'll be submitting on the 28th, just half page, just need to know what you want to write about and why. For example, why you think it's important. You can include one credible news source that you read that perhaps helped inform you about that topic. Again, this is part of the participation requirements. If you don't turn in the summary on the day it's due, you'll be counted absent for that day and you'll be treated the same as if you're absent five points off your participation grade. So I'm doing this as a form of motivation to keep people engaged in the class because if people aren't engaged, they're gonna, they're gonna suffer. So you're just gonna have to trust me on this. I'm doing this to try to keep students up to speed on the class on a daily basis and they are going to do better on the class if they stay engaged, if they give the class the priority that it deserves. Now the topic that you submit, if it's vague or perhaps a little scattered, I may ask you to resubmit. If it's not clear, not specific, or if there's too many other students that are looking at that same topic, now there's not going to be a penalty for that. I'm just trying to get the topics locked in as soon as we can and I want to get those topics spread out. We've got a pretty big class here, but there's lots of topics out there so that we're, we may need to resubmit your second choice there. So have a second choice in mind. Bottom line is that I need to approve your topic before moving on to the next phase of the paper assignment. So you do not want to lag behind on that. That's part of keeping up with the class, staying engaged, being prepared, being proactive. Now we'll talk about this more later, but the paper itself will be due on Wednesday, April 27th, towards the end of the semester. It will be a four and a half page minimum paper, so that's not a large paper, but you're gonna wanna give it some effort because it's 25% of your grade it's going to want to follow the instructions that I provide for you. Also, you're going to want to tell me what you've learned about that topic. Again, that will be attached as a Word file. I do that for a reason so that I can use that Word function, that uh, comment function, and then uh, email it back to you. That's going to be the more efficient way for me to grade those. I'm giving you this information up front now so that you'll be prepared and know what's coming and uh, what format it's due in. There's the format, double space, 12 point font, times New Roman, one inch margins. There'll be a minimum of six references. Very importantly, four of those minimum will be from peer-reviewed academic journals. So that's why I'm going to be spending a lot of time as we go preparing you for the paper. I'm going to give you a, a video talking about the paper assignment in general. I'm going to be posting a video about the peer-reviewed academic journals. I'm going to be requiring some uh, kind of progressive assignments on your sources so that we know how to find them, that they're presented in the proper formats. So once again, videos, instructions, and examples will be provided for citing your sources as far as the formats as far as the requirements for your paper assignment. This is also very important as far as the learning aspect. The paper will be an objective critical analysis of the issue that you choose. I'll be posting a PDF file guide to writing your paper that gives some useful information on your paper, particularly looking at the three primary requirements that I use to grade your paper, and that's uh, following instructions, the quality of your syntax, which is your organization of your paper, as well, you know, punctuation and spacing and, and paragraphs, things like that. Most importantly, the quality of the information that you provide. So keep in mind, this paper is not for you to opinionate, for you to editorialize, or for you to provide commentary. It is to demonstrate what you have learned from what you have read. So you want to read a lot from credible sources 
on that topic and then describe what you have learned. That's going to get you the best grade on your paper, not opinionating or editorializing about what you think is good, bad, right, or wrong. That's actually the opposite of learning something because if I wanted you to do that, uh, you know, anybody can do that, right? You don't need college to tell me what you think about stuff, right? So what I want you to do is learn about stuff and then tell me what you've learned. Don't copy and paste under any circumstances. The bottom line here is that students are graded on their ability to gather information from credible sources and display their understanding of that topic in their own words. That's really powerful stuff when you start doing that. That means you're taking it to the next level and you're learning more and more about that issue. As far as the honor code, any form of cheating will not be tolerated. It is the single worst thing that you can do. And when the test period starts, which I typically will turn the test on around noon that day, students will not be communicating whatsoever during that period of the tests. Any suspicious similarities between any student's answers on the tests would warrant an investigation. It's an open book, open note to test, so you should be prepared for it. It'll have that 35 minute to time limit to take that test, and uh, there'll be no communications whatsoever during that test period. As far as the paper goes, obviously that is going to be your own work. Plagiarizing anything from a source is forbidden. I will provide instru instructions for how to paraphrase what you've learned and then citing that at the end of that passage as well as how to cite your quotations that you're going to perhaps use to enhance your paper. So do not copy and paste under any circumstances. As far as the grade breakdown, I've talked about the test 20% each. Keep in mind this is very important. There's no makeups, there's no extra credit, and there's no extensions on any of the tests. Very important. As far as the paper, that's 25% of your grade. There will be a late penalty for each uh, class day that it's not turned in. And of course, it will not be accepted after the last day of the class. You would get a zero on that 25% of your grade. So you do not want to uh, let that go by. And there are no incompletes for the course. So this is extremely important. You have to uh, understand, this is one of the reasons why I keep repeating, keep up, stay engaged, be proactive, give this course the priority that it deserves. More burden is being put on you because of this online situation here. So you're going to have to uh, take it up to the next level to do well in the course. As far as the class schedule, the general schedule, of course, is that each Monday and Wednesday, the video lectures will be posted, and you'll have until 7 p.m. to respond to a brief discussion forum. Any assignments that are required that day, they would need to be posted by 7 p.m. as well. Other, otherwise, you would be counted absent for that day as well. The deadline to complete the tests on that day will also be 7 p.m. The, the test will shut down at 7 p.m. So that means you're going to want to start the test by 625 in order to get the full 35 minutes required or you know allotted for that test. All right, just very quickly, let's go through the schedule. First of all, today we're looking at the introduction to the course. Then we're going to be talking about general introduction to government politics. Then we're going to be spending quite a bit of time on the Constitution. Why do we have a Constitution? What's actually in the Constitution? We will read it. And then what the framers did, and when I say framers, these are the guys that, that uh, created the Constitution and uh, probably one of the most important documents in the history of humanity based on what it has accomplished and what is inspired. 
But then they had to sell it to the people, sell it to the states, rather. And uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to also talk about the concept of federalism and separation of powers. Then we will look at civil liberties and civil rights. Then we'll have a discussion about the 12th Amendment, which has to do with the Electoral College, which is quite confusing to a lot of people. The first test, online test, will be February 21st. That'll be on a Monday. 35 minutes to take that test in one sitting. 7 p.m. deadline will be covering chapters 1 through 4, as well as the uh, 12th Amendment, whatever else we discuss. The second third of the class will be going on the, the uh, scientific method. This will be very important to helping you prepare for your paper, to learn more about your paper, to analyze that topic scientifically. Paper topic summary will be due on February 28th. The uh, Chapter 5 will look at Congress. Then we'll be looking at the presidency. There will be a video posted about the peer-reviewed academic journals, spring break, March 14th through 18th. Then we will look at the executive branch. First of all, its primary structure. Then we'll be looking at its function as a bureaucracy, which is a general term for the administrative functions of government. Then we'll we'll be looking at the federal court system. And then test number two will be on April 4th, covering everything in that second third of the class. Now, the final third of the class will be looking at public opinion, elections, political parties, interest groups, economic policy, and foreign policy. Note the final paper, four and a half pages, is due on April 27th. Now, if there's any discrepancies on these dates, we can clear those up as we go, because it, rarely do I go through a, uh, a syllabus discussion and not find at least one typo here or there. So far, everything looks pretty good. If you've got a question, feel free to email me. May 9th will be the last day of our class, and that's when test number three will be uh, conducted online, 35 minutes, 7 p.m. deadline. So that covers the syllabus for today. Covered quite a bit, so feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions. Also, what I plan to do throughout the class is post a very short video here and there. I might even post a video for a discussion forum so I can try to get a little bit more interactivity going in this course, which uh, it uh, drastically needs because I've been teaching these types of online courses for several years now. And every semester, I'm trying to come up with new and better ways to try to improve the, uh, the interaction going on here, because the more interactive you are with this course, generally, the better you're going to do on it, because you're going to be more engaged, you're going to be more proactive. We'll uh, sign it off for now, and uh, good luck. I will, I guess, see you in class. <music>